Hi everyone, welcome back to uh, what episode are we on, Josh? 28. Episode 28 of Agogi TV. We're flying through these. Uh, on today's episode, we've got Lucy Aldridge. In fact, I forgot to introduce me and Josh. That, that'd be helpful, wouldn't it? I'm your host, <laughs> Bill Leonard. And <laughs> I'm your host, Josh Summersgill. We're, we're off to a flyer today. We're, we're, on, a, we're on a good road. Um, so, uh, Basically, on today's show, we've got Lucy Aldridge, as I already said. Uh, Lucy owns her own gym and is a personal trainer, um, and she has successfully run the gauntlet from personal trainer to opening her own gym. So we'll get a little bit more into that in a little bit. Um, Lucy is not a CrossFit trainer. I don't believe you're a CrossFit trainer anyway. So, no, no, no. Yes. Yeah. So, um, but she is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, she is a level four S and C coach, so um, we'll be very interested to hear a little bit more about that in a second. So, first things first, though, that we always like to know about everyone, Lucy, Lucy is how did you get into training, and how did you, how, how did your whole fitness journey sort of kick off? Gosh, where do I start? Um, so, honestly, like I was saying to you before, I literally will go on forever, but. It's quite a long story. Um, We've got time. And I, start, I started off um, being uh, a competitive athlete in like several sports. So I was a swimmer, cyclist, I did triathlons when I was younger. Um, and then um, it sort of like escalated and I started really enjoying sort of the fitness side of things. And um, I was winning a few races and whatever and so we were always like land training doing bits here and there and I was always really like into it um and then I moved house so um from Huddersfield and I moved over here to Lincolnshire and that move sort of changed everything and I sort of like went the opposite way and did nothing and um I was at school and oh. um, studying I did sixth form um in like my first year of sixth form and then decided like I didn't want to do like school anymore and I wanted to go to college anyway so I went to college and um I actually was studying to be a special um effects makeup artist right. so that was like proper whack and like yeah it's always a bit of a fun part of the story because I went to Harry Potter world and I was like oh my god I want to do this <laughs> anyway and then by the end of it um I got halfway through the course and I was like this really just isn't what I wanted to do because alongside it at the same time I was um doing my first job as a lifeguard and I was training in the gym with some of the lads and just really finding like this passion for the gym as such rather than fitness um and sport as a whole it was more like the gym i loved like weight training and, and like that as a whole um and i was like oh do you know what i'm gonna become personal trainer that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do it anyway so i walked into college one morning and i just said look miss i ain't coming back i'm going to be a personal trainer and she was like that's the stupidest thing i've ever heard anyway after that, I got, got a bit arsy, so I just walked out. I went home. I asked my dad, I was like, Dad, do you mind if I might do this personal training course? Um, can you lend us a grand? <laughs> do it, do it. And uh, it pretty much went from there. Um, so I did my personal training course, my level, one, uh, my level two, my level three, and managed to get a gym job at the local leisure centre. Um, and... The rest is pretty much history. Um, I was in the job, enjoying it, loving it. And then, yeah, a few bits happened and somehow along the way I've ended up with my own gym. <laughs> I've got a similar story. Yeah, we've got, I think we've all got a similar story. You sort of go, yeah, I'll be a, I'll, I'll be a personal trainer. Oh, wait, yeah, I've got a gym. Um, <laughs> that, that happens to all of us. Um, quick one that I want to circle back to, though. Um, Obviously, you say, I don't know how you've not found CrossFit from that explanation, to be fair. Like, you defo should be doing CrossFit by now. <laughs> but, um... I've given a bit, I've given CrossFit, like, a go. Like, I do some workouts, um, but I'm just, I don't join, I'm just not in a CrossFit gym. I'm a fan. I think it's wicked. Sounds, not gonna lie. Sounds fair. Um, so, you say you competed in, um... 
swimming, triathlon, and was it cycling or running? Sorry. Yeah, 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 cycling. Cool. So, first of all, like, um, like as a, a younger kid as such, so not mm-hmm. how, um, not many people get into that. How did you get into that as a kid? Sorry, my dog. Um, so come here. Oh no, it's fine. I've had to come into a, a different room and lock them out. Yeah. Because mine will be like all over. <laughs> um, she doesn't really take me on. Go on, so <laughs> you get into the um, Do you know what? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think my mum took me to swimming lessons. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> my mum took me to swimming lessons when I was dead young. And um, again, like, it just, start escalating I then joined the swim squad and um I ended up training like stupid amounts um obviously you have to climb sort of the ranks in the squad but then I ended up being in one of the the higher squads um training like up to nine times a week um and I was what uh, maybe 12 13 14 right um so I was still at school and, and everything and um I, I won the Ultra Championships, the North East Regionals and um yeah, I, I won those in a row. I think it was like three times. Wow, mega. Um and then it got to sort of the last one and I just remember it was like oh, this is so hard and it just really started to get to me and it was just tiring. I didn't want to go. My mum would force me because she was my coach as well. So we were trying to find like different ways of like motivating me. And I remember I was sort of like um, doing triathlons along the side because I was good at swimming, I was good at cycling, running, I was a bit shit out, but I just made do. And, um, and then ended up doing really well in triathlons as well. And then, so as, Triathlon's like running along the side, swimming's I'm getting really heavy, and I'm like, oh shit, scrap that. So I scrapped swimming, scrapped the triathlon, and just went cycling and uh, a track in Manchester at the velodrome um, for about two and a half years, um, but didn't really get anywhere with it. Um, I did a few road races and stuff, but I didn't really get anywhere with my track racing um honestly i think it was just because the passion wasn't there um but then obviously finding the gym it all became evident that yeah. that just puzzled no it's pretty it's pretty cool again like i don't know any, i don't know anyone that was like competitive in like track mm. at that age do you know what i mean but my background's rugby and josh's is football so like you know <laughs> it's like, when, uh, nice one. like Some, something actually i would be interested to know um, and this is something like me and Phil spoke about before. So um, Phil's missus is an ex uh, gymnast. So when she was younger, she yep. loved like competitive gymnastics. And mm-hmm. now, almost because of that, she has like zero interest in like competitive training or competing in a sport. Like she still kind of goes to the gym. Mm-hmm. And Phil forces her, mm-hmm. but like she's not really as interested mm-hmm. in it. And obviously, with yourself competing yeah. at such a young age. Yeah. Do, do you do you see yourself ever competing again in any kind of sort of like sport or like is that something you've um, again? Well, I don't see myself necessarily competing in a sport like swimming and cycling again. But obviously, I'm now um, training for my first bodybuilding show. Wow. In, well, it was for June. Obviously, given the circumstances, it's not anymore. Um, they've transferred me to a date in September. Whether that goes ahead or not, I don't know. But that's um, now the aisle that I'm going down. Um, and the reason reason I got into that and the reason I decided to compete was because I missed that drive of wanting to win. And it's I am so competitive in every single ounce of life. Um, I'm like my worst critic as well. Like I always strive for the like my best and uh, it sometimes get, gets me down a little bit because I've always had that competitive streak and if it's not perfect then oh do it again do you know what I mean you know what have mm. you ever considered doing CrossFit yeah. <laughs> 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 you know what <laughs> you know what 
I promise we're, the, the whole thing isn't to try and get you to do CrossFit. I no, no, I swear down, I swear down. Or anything like that. <laughs> One of the girls I used to work with, um, she went and uh, she started CrossFit now. And, hey, she looks insane. She is like an absolute machine. I mean, she was always fit before. She always, like, was good at training. But now I see pictures and her videos and I'm like, shit. Oh god! And then, then it's just me there, like with a fucking barbell, shoulder pressing, and she's like throwing hundred kg up and down. <laughs> like, oh god, that looks fun. Um, but yeah, I've always wanted to like go to a CrossFit gym, but the nearest one for me is like twenty miles away. I think. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's just a bit. Of a the, trek. The, just. Uh, but I was going to do the Murph on, not sorry. too long ago. I'm thinking of doing that later this week. <laughs> so. I think the reason that this keeps coming up is just because everything you've explained to us is like you, you've got a really competitive drive, like you've got a really yeah. good base of experience in training. Like that to me is like a red flag for somebody who would be fucking good at CrossFit. Do you know what I mean? So that's like that. They're like, Josh, he's like trying to get you on his books on the sly now. He's like, oh, <laughs> like, like let's, let's do some CrossFit sessions and see how this goes. Um, you picked up snatching really well. I'm like, you know, I've got an eye for this thing. There we see, there we um, so, yeah, so that's why that keeps coming over. It, it, is, it is interesting that, like, obviously, yeah. you oh, everything you've done, it, it's, it's the same story as I hear from people in our gym that are like really good at CrossFit. Like they're just competitive. They, they, they need that little competitive outlet, which CrossFit kind of gives you in 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 mm. a sense. So, uh, and I'm not just trying to sell CrossFit to you. Um, I just I just find it interesting. Um, but no, that I think that I think that's really cool. Um, so you went from obviously oh you can uh, compete in. Um, you eventually got your um S and C level four. Um. Mm-hmm. And you'd started off with like, and then I said, I said I'm going to say Les Mills style training, but it sounds like I, I, that's a bad thing. I've got nothing against Les Mills before anybody starts getting upset with me. Um, but started off with like Les Mills style <laughs> training, like body combat, body pump, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then you went from that to a level four. Um, how was that sort of transition? What did you say, kind of pick up and learn from from going from one to the other, or what was the contrast? As so. Such? So, Les Mills is something that we do within the gym. Um, it's on all of our class timetables, and um, I absolutely love it for creating community um, within people um, that are newbies to the gym. Um, and it, it's a really good way of getting people in, getting them to do activity and do fitness. Um, can you do fitness? You know what I mean, anyway. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, and that's why I love that. But it, I love it for that reason. Would I do it in my own training? No. Um, because, yeah, personally, I just, I like it with the vibe of the people. Again, like, it's going back to that community. But in terms of my own training and my own one-to-one clients, Obviously, I'm not taking them through a body pump class. I'm not taking them through a combat class when I have a personal training session with them. And for me, I wanted to better my knowledge. I wanted to take it that step further. Um, and I found that strength and conditioning was the avenue that I wanted to more or less go down um, in terms of coaching at the time. Now I have taken elements from the course and I'm applying them to my coaching but I'm not essentially a strength and conditioning coach I know Josh from the um, course yourself the amount that you would take through um, the amount you would take from that course and apply it to obviously your CrossFit training your own training your clients and etc etc would be insane but just the style of people that I've worked with and that I market myself to it's not something, an avenue that I've directly gone down. It's more of what I've taken from it and then applied to. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Like, from a business um, sense, it makes a lot of sense because there's yeah. no... And again, we, we experience this with CrossFit. Like, there's no stigma around, oh, my God, CrossFit. Uh, like, nobody's going, oh, my God, Les Mills is too hard. Like, yeah. 
I've never heard that personally. Like maybe people, no. do, but like they don't go home. We're, no. we're constantly fighting the battle of CrossFit isn't too hard. It's it's scalable. It's repeatable. All those things. Yeah, from, from a business model sense, for you, that's perfect. You've got all these people that come and have a really good time. They get a bit, yeah. of it, and then they go, "All right, okay, how do I take it to the next level?" And you're sat there with you. This is sick. I did brilliant. Like, um, so that kind of actually brings me on to you opening your own gym. Um, you you opened your own gym. You say you sort of fell into it, which I think happens to most of us. But you don't really fall into anything in this industry without putting a shit ton of hard work in there. Um, yeah. Um, just tell us a bit more about how you went, how you came about opening your own gym. Um, and, and what it's like, and um, what your community is like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the way this started is it, quite. Now looking back, it's quite a funny story. At the time, it was oh, it was the hardest time of my life. Honestly, it was horrific. Um, but looking back, it's something we can laugh about. But um, what happened at first? Obviously, I mentioned I was at the local leisure centre um and just going through the motions and the way it all happened was I was teaching a shit ton um I was literally I think oh, I can't even remember the amount of hours I was teaching it was it was like 35 plus um classes I was doing a week it was ridiculous it was mental um and it got to a point where I think there was a bit of a breakdown in communication between my job and where I saw my opinions were, let's just put too strong. Um, and, <laughs> and so I, along with my business partner, who was my partner at the time, um, decided that we would um, open up a gym. It, is a, it was a dream of his that he always had had. Um, but he was also working at the same centre. Um, and we had this community and it was like, and I don't want this to sound like real big headed, because um, it's not what I mean, but it was like this community surrounded by the trainers. Um, it wasn't the gym itself, it was the trainers and everyone came there and it was just insane. Like I can't even explain it, it was just insane. And we were just like, let's just open up a gym and see how it goes and um, we were when we sat down and discussed plans and stuff I was 18 um I think he was 22 23 um we then opened it um about a year later and um it's sort of gone from there really it just it, like I said it was born from um what we'd created already, but needing a more positive venue, yeah. Yeah. Um, something where we could thrive in that community. If, again, if you understand um, what I'm trying to say, but yeah, it just, yeah, best thing we ever did. Um, 100% best thing we ever did. How is it now? Well, obviously given the circumstances, it's can be stressful at, at times obviously with the, all the uncertainty that's going on at the moment but before all of that um again the best thing that i've ever done that we've ever done um obviously it's got its challenges and um, at first it was quite scary um blessing my dad he was shitting bricks because he was like my 19 year old daughter has just gone off with like a guy set up this gym and yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, awesome. and I was like, yeah, it'll be fine, it'll yeah. be fine, don't worry about it, it's fine. And he's like, oh my God, what is going on? Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's worked out for the better. And again, taking that risk, taking the jump, it all paid off and um, yeah, we're so how, long, how long have you guys been open for now? Oh, we just hit a two year anniversary. Oh, like, man. like just two weeks ago. Oh, brilliant! Congratulations. So, yeah. What over the last two years? Mm -hmm. What have you learned from 
or in the gym, whether it's, and this can be, might be about actually running a business. It might be about people in general. Um, cause we asked this cause like since myself and Phil opened our gym, like what we've learned is that you can't even list it. It's that, it's that broad. Um, yeah. so like what, what have you basically learned from obviously the process from the last two years? So much, so much. And I think for me personally, how long have these guys been open? Uh, it's been four years in April. Four oh, years, that's mental. Um, yeah, so just within two years, I, I don't know whether you'd agree with me on this one, but um, um, when I opened, when we opened the gym, I was a very different person. And yeah. I think just growing up, I mean, I was young, like, I, little thing chicken but um when we opened the gym like I was a teenager and I literally had no idea about the real world and throughout the two years I've been made to open and um, been made to grow up so fast and if there was say like a few things just off the top of my head um that nothing is a hundred pounds everything's in grand it's always as grand how much is your rent a grand how much is your bill a grand how much is kit four grand it, everything's in grand and that's the one thing i've learned is that um yeah nothing's in hundreds anymore um and <laughs> that's what I'm Dude, so just a quick one out of interest when you when you open your gym there's a funny story about me Phil, with this like did you get to a budget or did you have a budget <laughs> yeah. yeah and did you stick to it yeah we had, uh no no so when when we was opening phil had watched uh watched a podcast and he basically said right whatever you think your budget is to open double it so me and phil were like yeah i don't know we know what our budget is it's we're not doubling it no chance we can um, win. only once we opened that we should have doubled it <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 As, as we're opening and painting the floor because we run out of matting. <laughs> I'm like, what happens in my life? <laughs> so, yeah, like, like you say, everything is in thousands, isn't it? It's not it it's not goods, it's like it is in thousands. So, yeah, we, what, sorry, you were saying. We, we managed to um, open up our gym in, I don't know how, but we managed to do it. I mean, it was on a budget anyway, but a good gym with not a lot of money um and now looking back i think not a lot of money yeah but it's still a fucking shit ton <laughs> and <laughs> i'm thinking how did we even do that and if i could go back would i do it differently probably well if i could go back no if i could do it again 100 percent. yeah like you learn again you're learning stuff from what you've already already done so essentially, essentially i'd say like learning how i could open a gym better like and run a gym better is probably things i'll take from it but um another sort of lesson learned i think um for me was becoming a trainer because before it sounds odd and for a lot of people it's been like oh my god what the fuck but i've never personally trained before i opened a gym so I opened a gym, not being a personal trainer, essentially being a Les Mills trainer, a Les Mills gym instructor. That's what I was. I opened up a gym being a Les Mills gym instructor. Um, and uh, Ryan, who I set up the gym with, he, uh, he'd been a personal trainer for a few years, so he'd got his client base and stuff. And I was there like, oh, God, I wonder if I'm going to get any clients. And I'm thinking, oh, God, what if I don't get any clients? Oh, no. And, and so a lot of that was not only running my own business, um, sorry, not only running a gym, but then trying to build my own personal training business alongside of that. So there was a lot of education in, like, taxes and, like, yep. VAT, receipts, you know. Yeah, so. it's, it, it's insane in it, like, we always talk. Yeah. About, we say this all the time, and our, our gym members probably won't won't appreciate it as much as we do. But we talk all the time about how we could burn it down and start again, and how much better it'd be. 
and like we are, we are yeah we literally go right if we could burn it down and start again what would we do and then we sit there and go okay well we can actually do that thing now so let's do that um, yeah. and that's kind of our like brainstorming process is how we make the gym better mm. burn it down start again what can we take from it and what can we actually do in the present situation yeah um that's For something sure. and, and that's something we've done for a while and um like you say every nothing uh, everyone always thinks and like you've really rented kit out to members and stuff like that like you say I, I i one thing i've enjoyed is seeing people understand how much that kit's cost when they've gone to buy it themselves and they go oh right so <laughs> so that that 10 kilogram dumbbell is actually like 300 pounds <laughs> not 300 pounds but you get yeah that. absolutely um it's pretty cool seeing that so uh, yeah, see, seeing people actually get their own understanding of what what we've done and, and it's no disrespect yeah. to our members because they all look after the kit yeah do you know what I mean? they all look after it really well um but yeah like, like you say it's just it's, oh okay that actually that's worth that that do you know what i mean oh, yeah cool. it's like this it's this different understanding isn't it of what they've actually got um and what they've got access to um and 100 percent like you know les mills um you know the les mills bars um, I don't know if you've seen them, but they've got like the plates and they foot on the yeah, end. The barbells for children, is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> no, no. Well, the the plates are like dumbbells. Yeah, yeah. Right, and there's like loads of tech around it, and uh, it's just plates for dumbbells. Um, and they are so pricey. They are so expensive, and I think it's like three hundred quid plus. For this one set, it's, it's a barbell that weighs about 2.5 kilos, two five, two two point five, and one and two one. You guys are thinking, <laughs> but no, but, but it, um, I'm also not surprised that it's 300 quid. Like, I feel yeah. like yeah. it would be, would yeah, it? yeah, but it's ridiculous. And then there's some people that unfortunately haven't managed to get them, so they're like, oh, okay, we'll we'll go and um go see if I can buy some they've gone to buy them and they're like oh shit yeah they're quite expensive and I'm like yes yeah, so when you drop that weight on the floor I'm like, yeah you know what I mean so people now understand why I have a mini heart attack every time they drop an empty barbell like <laughs> people used, people used to joke about it now they understand so I think I think we're gonna yeah. be in a position when we open up well, it's all good yeah um, so yeah. interestingly obviously you 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 jumped into opening the gym. Um, and, and one thing that I do want to say is actually credit to you. At 18, 19, I would not have had the balls to open my own gym. Like, no. a million, I was too busy getting pissed. So, like, <laughs> like, so, so credit to you for, for that for a start. I, I 100% oh, agree with what Bill just said. Like, something I always oh, say, I hate to be able to judge me now by how I was at 18. Because touching on what you did before of how you change and how you just sort of grow up and learn how things go. And again, Phil will be exactly the same. I'm not even sure Phil was in this country when he was 18. Yeah, I was. Just. Yeah. You know, just. What, yeah, I, wasn't, I wasn't on this planet, but I was definitely... Yeah, yeah, that was it. But, <laughs> um, no, but that, that, it, is a, it is a big deal. And I think to be at 19 and sort of go, I love this and I'm going to pursue that, mm. is like... A really amazing thing so so like yeah. what drove you to do that over, other than the fact that like sort of kind of necessity was there any other like external mm. driving factors that made or internal that made you sort of go you know what like i love this so i'm gonna go and do that all the time um yeah um would and just to, uh, after that would you have any advice for anybody who wants to pursue being like and it doesn't have to be fitness like if you love something like and it's sort of mm. what it should be all about like from a young age obviously how would you advise somebody to go ahead and attack that yeah no 100 percent um so i feel like this is a question and I've, I've been asked it obviously a little bit in the past and my answer will always be the same is i don't think i could ever oh gosh i've just got an education that's why i turned them off i just blasted my ear <laughs> um but yeah it's, it's a, an answer that i'll always give and i feel like i can't take 100% of the credit for this because um, my business partner that we set up with he, he's got such a drive um, and 
I don't even know how to explain it, but he's just a doer. And he's just, a, if he wants to do something, he'll do it. And I feel like I've always been a bit like, yeah, I'll do it, but I just need to make sure it's completely right. And I just need to make sure it's this. And, and I'll be a little bit hesitant, but like, again, the drive's there. If I want to do it, I know that I can do it. Um, and I think that's where we both came into play and worked really, really well, is that we just did it. Um, and yeah, I think that was probably the most um, influencing factor of opening the gym um, at that age was the fact that not only did I internally have the drive, um, and when I was younger, I always said to myself, I literally remember being with my dad in the car to one of my cycling races, and he was talking about, what do you want to do? What do, you want to do? I was like, I don't know what I want to do, but I know that I don't want to work for anybody else. Yeah. And that was always my answer. I was like, I'm not going to work for anybody else. I'm going to work for myself. My dad was self-employed and always had been. Yeah. And I was like, I want to be like you. And I'm going to be self-employed. I don't want to work for anyone else. I don't want to work for company. I was quite strong about that. It was really, I and mean, it's weird now looking back at it, um, because it's as if I knew, even back then. Um, and then when the opportunity came around and we were discussing it, it was sort of like a all right this is it this is what we've got to do and yeah um what was the bit of question <laughs> i can't remember but yeah no it's good so you like, like you say you 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 had that drive from a young age mm. which is cool and like funnily enough i remember i was talking to my girlfriend about this the other day i was like i remember being about 14 15 and saying i'm gonna open my own business when i'm older I didn't know what it was, but I remember saying that. Yeah. And then, like, I got caught up in the fact that my mum and dad had real jobs and I should probably go and go to college and do what. And, that yeah. was, and it, it wasn't until I was in my, like, mid-twenties that I went, ah, oh, fuck this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm on. Yeah. You can... and then, but, so, you um, what, have you got, like, any advice for somebody else who feels like that? Yeah, yeah. Biggest advice, just fucking do it. Nice. Just literally just fucking do it because the worst thing I've found, um, and I say this anyway, like I still sit here and I'm thinking, should I do it? Can I do it? And I doubt myself and I get myself into this little like this cycle of, oh my God, what if, what if, what if? But actually I just step back and I think, okay, what have I done so far? Um, as a collective, what have we done so far? okay how did we do that okay we just fucking did it all right let's just fucking do it um because i think just fucking do it the, the, the thing that i've noticed is take yourself out of the situation and do the old pros and cons and then the bottom line was what's the worst that's gonna happen yeah and the worst that was gonna happen was for me um, the worst thing that was going to happen, I would end up with no money. I'd probably have to declare myself bankrupt. I'd be bankrupt at 19. And yeah. I live with my mom. She can provide me lunch and my dinner. I could probably get a job at Tesco's or wherever, wherever, like, because they're always hiring or whatever. I could go and do something and I could rebuild my life. And that was literally what the worst that could happen. And even that, the worst that was going to happen not that bad so I think it's then just weighing up the positives and more than likely the positives will outweigh the negatives and I guess we can do it agreed you know just get on with it 100% agreed need right. money go to a bank we'll be doing over the next few days what we want, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, I'm gonna I, I'm going to stop the main part of the podcast there because I think that's an excellent like point to take the yeah. just, just fucking do it get on with it and like what's the worst that can happen and, like if anybody out there yeah. is thinking of being an entrepreneur or a business owner or whatever you want to call yourself like that is the long and short of it yeah so yeah right, but we'll leave it there because I really like that um mm -hmm. we're going to go on to our fun finish questions now um, oh, okay they, we always say that they're short, but they're never short. So we're just going to sort of like roll okay. and see what happens. So, um, first one, have you got a book or a film recommendation for everyone? It can be your favourite or whatever. Oh, book or film recommendation. Uh, right. 
are we are we talking like motivational book or are we talking like Many educational people. right i'm gonna tell i'm gonna give a recommendation of a book that has changed my life my mum's life and um everyone's i feel everyone's life that's read it and it's called the chimp paradox Okay. Yeah, okay. If you read it, I'm, I'm going to be the only person you've ever spoke to that has read that book and gone, "What the fuck was that on about?" <laughs> like, yeah. This is Phil's favorite book to hate. Yeah, I do. Everybody Mate. loves it. You just don't get it. <laughs> like, right. And this is it. And this is it. And I want. I want to just say something. And I'm hoping that it's going to help you, right? And just be look at it a different way. So I think this book is mint because so simple to fit into any part of life even if you don't agree with the way that is explaining um like so those that haven't read it it's basically about um your mind and breaking it down into different sections and how different sections of the brain are um responsible for different actions and different emotions and for me it wasn't necessarily reading it thinking fucking hell yeah this is the bible i'm gonna it was it was more of a reason it okay right when i'm now having an argument with someone and they're going off at me like eh. like if a customer came in and was like eh, even though we don't have any customers but they all, if someone came in if someone came in and was like eh, in my ear i would now be able to just step back and just be like okay and then go because i just feel like it something to relate to yeah. and again um my mum has read the book she absolutely loves it and she really does live by that but i don't necessarily live by it i've just really enjoyed the concept yeah and so, i think it's quite important for some people to what is interesting is i've actually recommended the book to a lot of people i just didn't like it for me like yeah i get people, it i'm like you know what go read that because like it's a really simple way to understand these things but I think yeah because I'd already done a lot of research in like cognitive behavioral therapy, stuff like that. Yeah. It was like helpful towards coaching. I sort of was like reading it going, yeah, he's just explaining it in a really like roundabout way. Like that was that yeah. was way of doing it. But like say for somebody who needs like a snapshot to understand it and sort of get in touch with like emotions and how mm -hmm. they think, like, yeah, go read it for sure. hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, so I always give it a bit of shit, but then I'm like, yeah, no, it is a good book. Yeah. <laughs> it it's a it's a cool book, cool book. I'm reading one at the moment. Um, uh, the oh, um, you are a badass. I think you are a badass. by Jen. I don't know. I think it's you are a badass. Um, and I've read read it. I don't know, maybe. Um, but actually getting into it, it's it's alright. And the secret about the law of attraction. Three main books. I just standard. Awesome. Standard answer, but I think it's yeah, like important. It. No, it's really good. Brilliant. Okay, so book recommendations. And uh, next one is what's your favourite swear word? Fuck. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> all, all Say it all the time. <laughs> Just fucking do it. <laughs> yeah. Just fucking do it. <laughs> Brilliant. And um, next one. Um, if you could pick another profession, any profession that you'd like, what would it be? Oh, I don't know. I think we should add oh. to that. I think it can be a fictional profession as well. Yeah, so you can make it a up. Just to make it yeah, up. So you can be like a, <laughs> a stormtrooper or something. Do you know what I mean? Something that's not actually... Oh. Uh, okay, yeah, so I, I tell you what, are you into like Marvel or, uh, or like anything? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, I like Marvel. I like Marvel. Okay. If you could have any profession in the Marvel universe, what would it be? So you can be anything you want. You're not allowed to be a superhero. You gotta be. You gotta work oh. for somebody. So, like, what's an example of that then? So, uh, example would be like international assassin for Shield. Oh, okay. Or you could be um, one of the guards on Asgard. Yeah. Uh, um, the thing is, I don't go into Marvel that deep. But I like Marvel. I just, I'm, I don't know, I'm not that deep. Um, oh, I'm a geek as you feel. I know. That's my <laughs> yeah. I don't live and breathe Marvel, to be fair. Um, but I enjoy it. I enjoy it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, just a fictional profession then. Oh, a profession. You, you go wild. 
He's actually holding oh, that. Yeah. I thought the camera was frozen. I was like, I know, I was like, have we froze? Yeah, we... I didn't need to do it. It's like my old Facebook pic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really? I, know, I feel like I feel like I'd be like, um, I don't know. Oh shit! Like a life coach or something. That's real boring, but I just. I like chatting with people and making sure that they're all right. So I like, I think I'd be a life coach. We had somebody on recently and I gave him loads of shit. He's, he's a good lad, but he, he, his, his dream profession was an electrician. And I was like... Shut up. I was like, okay. <laughs> I, was like, Love it. I was like, you can be an astronaut, you can be in the SAS, you can do all these things. No, I want to be an electrician. I want to dive under floorboards. <laughs> I was like, brilliant. <laughs> I love, love him dearly, but I'm going to pick him up every time. An electrician. <laughs> okay. okay, last one. Um, okay. If you could sit down with anybody in the world and learn everything you can from them in a 24-hour period, so you've got limited time to sit down with them and like, interview them and find out everything they know, who would it be? Dead or alive. Why are you doing any, this? Anyone, anyway, because anyway, we like messing with people. <laughs> So I'll throw a couple of examples that we've had so far. We've had Arnold Schwarzenegger, we've had Barack Obama, Muhammad uh, Ali, Muhammad Ali uh, Elon Musk. We've had all those people. Me, don't forget me. Don't <laughs> forget they chose me. <laughs> no, that never happened. I deleted it. Um, oh, God. So if I could sit down with anyone and just and learn from them, right? Yeah. You can pick uh, for 24 hours. For 24 hours? Do you know what? I'm going to hit you with an answer. I don't think you're going to expect it. I'd love to sit down with Anthony Joshua for 24 hours. But I'm going to say Anthony I, Joshua. I, I, <laughs> good. That's a good answer. I think he's got a, like, he's got a killer mindset, so that could be cool. I like it. Yeah. But he's got like, a good mindset as well, but it's pretty basic to look at. So, <laughs> That's so, well, yeah. I love that. <laughs> just about how you will I don't know. <laughs> amazing I so don't know. Lucy do you know what we've got all the way through the podcast and we've not got the name of your gym oh yeah um, so the gym is called Feel Good Studio and Gym amazing. and it's in a small town called Louth which is near well it's about half an hour away from Lincoln we probably know Lincoln more, but yeah excellent and if Feel you know over people want to know a bit more about you how do they find you yeah so um you can find me on facebook which is lucy aldridge um or the gym at the other studio and gym or my instagram is lucy underscore aldridge i think okay, um i'll get that in the show notes below anyway so that people can yeah um yeah you can check me out drop me a dm or whatever if you want to know any more but yeah, that's that. And then I think that's it. Amazing. Right. Well, thank you very much for coming on today. And I really appreciate Thanks for it. having me. Thanks, uh, You're welcome. No worries. Um, so first, uh, last thing, guys, obviously, don't forget to check out our previous shows, popular shows include uh, uh, we had Trav. Trav was a mega one. Uh, you should go and listen to Trav. You'll like that. He swears a lot. You'll get. You'll you'll enjoy it. <laughs> um, that was episode four, so that was way back when. Uh, and then obviously we've had some more recent episodes um, where we have had. Um, Kate Callender on, who was a great, a great guest, really interesting. I think if you enjoyed this episode, you'll definitely enjoy the uh, podcast with Kate, um, who is a NHS critical care nurse, which was interesting at the time being, uh, for this time. Uh, so again, thank everyone. For, thanks for tuning in, guys. And uh, find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Leave us a five star review on iTunes if possible. Please like and share all the good stuff uh, to help us get the podcast out there to more and more people. Um, Every week we have a new guest, or every couple of days at the minute we have a new guest because we're all stuck in, out in the house. Um, so, say guys, please join us and uh, like, share, and review. Thank you very much. Peace.